and IMMU is obvious. We're going to go through some more of these. Notice where it bottomed out. It had a long, steady uptrend. And where did it pull back to? Right smack dab into the 50-day moving average area. And then we can see the indecisive trading down here is starting back up. So what did this tell us? They told us that they were going to stay up above the T-line. When they broke through the T-line, they went to the next major support level. Now you're back up above the T-line. This one you can hold as long as it doesn't close back below the T-line. And... Uh, ALNY. Now, this is the reason we like to use the different patterns. So notice the little slow curve here. Also, the pennant formation that broke out. Today, you had a doji sandwich. It was up uh, significantly. But this is exactly why you want to see what type of signals occur at these breakout levels, because this makes for a very perfect timing situation if you're trading options. So with an opening positive in a doji sandwich situation, telling us that we're going to move positive, probably the same magnitude as this. It also told us we weren't going to resist at this level. This one's a very nice, uh, was a, should be a very nice option trade, and it still is probably a good option trade, with it probably going to move somewhat along the same magnitude as that move right there. BYD, there's your scoop pattern. And where did it bottom out? Right here, right on the 50-day moving average. Um, let's see. Uh, so, anyways, this one has usually will have a slingshot effect. That should have some good upside to it. Again, when you're using the patterns, you've got much higher probabilities that the price is going to move in the direction of what the pattern tells you, because that pattern was developed by investor sentiment that was probably setting up on something more uh, prominent than just the uh, market direction in itself. Here's kind of that little doji gap up right now on uh, PKT. I wouldn't be surprised if you at least don't get a pop back up to the 50 and then possibly up to the 200. But the reason is you've got a hammer, doji, spinning top, doji gap up through the T-line. That tells you they've made their decision coming out of this little cradle pattern which way they're going to go. Um, uh, Josh, all I can tell you is let the charts tell you what to do because that's the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling. And if they know somebody's attacking Syria or Egypt or there's trouble over there, they're still buying, you know, having that knowledge. Let's see, we did this one. I don't think we did this one. No. C E L G. C E L G. Doji inverted hammer, which is your gravestone doji bullish confirmation. This is a very simple trade. Wave one, wave two. This type of setup right here, this is why you want to know your signals. And I've put more uh, emphasis recently on the inverted hammer because an inverted hammer. Gravestone doji, stochastics in the oversold area, and they open up positive the next day, you've probably got a 95% uh, chance or greater that you're going to be in a, in a good, strong uptrend. So uh, use that inverted hammer information uh, uh, to your advantage. Now, what we're looking for in a market trend is something that's going to give us inordinate profits, like the fry pan bottom or the slow curve. Notice what they did when they get broke out of this trading range. They did a doji gap up. That's your best friend, number one. Number two, when that gap up broke this resistance level, confirming that you're rounding bottom, this put all the probabilities that you were in the right place at the right time. Um, so using that information was exactly why we recommended RPRT. Now, why is RPRT not showing up. RPRT. Because I've misspelled it. That's a great.
well, oh, that's why. Because it's RPTP, that's why. All right. Coming out of this fry pan bottom. Yep, that was it. Thank you. Coming out of this fry pan bottom, notice what got this one going. A big left-right combo that broke out through this level. That told us which way they were taking it. So, once again, there's two aspects of recognizing the patterns. Number one, it gives you a very good timing of when something is going to move. Number two, usually the move is going to be substantial in spite of what the general market conditions are. As we saw today, the market got very weak uh, uh, in the afternoon or after they started announcing what was going on over in, uh, oh, uh, oh, how come I can't even do this? U-S-T. Bah, bah, I can't even figure out how to get back to the, the NASDAQ. Anyways, the markets were uh, got soggy today, yet things coming out of patterns remain strong. So that's that's a, two advantages is number one, the timing. Number two, that you're still going to probably have a good trade even if the markets go sour on you. Now here's a legend, which also coming out of this little rounding bottom, right off the 50-day uh, moving average, just gives, tells you the obvious. The obvious was you're in a strong uptrend, you had profit taking, right back to an area that told you everybody was going to be buying uh, uh, right here. Could you define the left-right combo? A left-right combo is when you have a doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal. And we'll get we'll we'll get some more here. Um, RMTI, which has been pointed out in the uh, chat room. There's your slow uh, fry pan bottom. Notice what it did a couple of days ago. It just went up huge and came back. Open positive again. What that pretty much tell us? It told us pretty much that this was profit taking up here. And when they opened up positive and started trading positive, they were going right back into that profit taking area. The profit taking's over. They were starting back up. First uh, target is probably going to be right here. And uh, CBST also. There's your kind of your doji sandwich, your fry pan bottom bouncing off the T-line. Make this a little bit bigger. And where did we close? Right here. If we see positive trading tomorrow, probably a good option trade as far uh, yeah, you can ask questions anytime. Just, uh, uh, yeah, we'll get to the individual stocks uh, uh, later. And, uh, yeah, it's good to be asking questions as we're going along. If we go past the chart, just refer to which one you were asking the question on. Um, DDD, can you show me wave one, way two? Okay. Um, and here's another one, BCRX that we recommended the last couple of days when it was coming up out of the uh, – uh, kind of the slow curve, then you had a double doji, and then today it took off this level. Here's a wave one, wave two, going into wave three. DDD has a much bigger flat trading area. You can pretty well say this would be wave one, wave two, now going into wave three. Now, a lot of people say, ask, well, these wave one, wave two, wave three, uh, um, have anything to do with, with Elliott Wave? Nothing to do with Elliott Wave. It's just that we know that prices move in waves. We know that if there's a strong price move, notice how it came kind of out of the fry pan bottom, broke out, strong price move, profit taking, the profit taking's over. How can we tell this is profit taking versus a reversal? Because note what it did. It kind of stayed on the T line, and this was not decisive selling. So after the in, or indecisive selling was over, the indecisive buying started back in, and now they're exuberant about being back in this position. If this was a strong price move, there was a reason for it. Then there's profit taking. Now this price move just continues the reason for why they were buying strong right here. 
how do you select your targets? Uh, because if this is wave one going from whatever, say two to 635, that means this one should go up about uh, 435, puts you in somewhere around the 1035 area. Where would you set your stop? At the place that would tell us the bears are back in control. If I was buying this on a positive open tomorrow, I'd have my stop right here at the halfway point for two reasons. Because if this was a candle that told you that they weren't resisting anymore, that was the bulls taking control, if they close it more than halfway down the candle, this is one of the very simple stop losses Ops, loss, uh, I want to say, uh, lessons for candlesticks. Japanese rice traders say if this is the candle that told us the bulls were in control, then the bears shouldn't be able to close it more than halfway down this candle or their bears are back in control. You don't want to be in a uh, bullish position if the bears are in control. And if they closed it back below the halfway point of this candle, where are they? They're right back into the trading range that you just popped out of. Yeah, so the, yes, uh, Tammy, the, uh, these small up and down moves are not waves. What we can see is there's an obvious resistance level at this area, which the gap up through that area today told us that resistance level wasn't there anymore. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Uh, GMN, whoops, K. Well, well, well. Uh oh, I hope this isn't kind of isn't coming back into. Bah humbug! All right, smoke them if you got them. We're just waiting for. Uh, there we go. All right, another kind of slow curve for IPN bottom. Notice where we are right now, right at the breakout point. So if they open this positive. That pretty much tells us this area is not acting as a resistance. The enthusiasm is building back up. If this is wave one, wave three is probably going to be popping to that, that magnitude also. It's halfway down the candle or the body of the candle. Yes, not just, not the, including the, uh, uh, the price range. Remember, the most important elements in a candlestick signal that the Japanese rice traders pointed out is the open and the close. Those are the beginning decisions and the final decisions. Everything else uh, inside and outside that area is just noise. What we're looking for is what was the final decision for, for the day. Um, uh, so anyways, uh, 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 GBT, I don't know which one, if you're talking about DDD. Uh, to me, I'm looking at more that this area right in here was the resistance level, where they couldn't get it up through most of the time. Okay, and so, again, the reason you want to stick with the uh, patterns is that that pattern was being developed in spite of what the uh, market conditions were. Oh, poof. Okay, there we go. So notice what this stock did today, ARH. It was still moving up in spite of what the market was doing. Um, it may have backed off a little bit, but it still kept in the trajectory of uh, what we consider a fry pan bottom. So if you're starting to look at calls or a call trade on this, you know at least you have the potential coming up to this level, which on a short-term trade could be good. And then at that point, you see what type of uh, price move, you're, if it breaks out through this level. Once again, if this is wave one, wave two, going into wave three, wave three should be somewhat the same magnitude as this one. Yes, that's also true. Don't get hung up on the exact uh, uh, support and resistance areas, just where you can kind of visually see this, where people were buying and people uh, uh, are selling. doesn't have to be exact. Uh, CBST, another one, that if this opened positive after a doji gap up today, that would be breaking us out through this level. Another, wave one. Here kind of you've got fry pan bottom, strong price move. Now a J-hook, fry pan bottom, get ready for another strong price move. If 
a stock ended in a doji, where would I place my stop? Uh, oops. Uh, at this point, because notice where you are in this uptrend, you're pretty high. First of all, you probably wouldn't want to see it close back below this candle, halfway point of this candle, for two reasons. Number one, probably your T-line is going to be up above that level by tomorrow. Number two, you'd have an evening star signal, which would be closing back into the trading area. What you should be looking for is a positive open, but if this was a wave, uh, or if this was the first part of a, a, uh, a J-hook pattern breakout because of a doji sandwich, if it opens positive, where's the next likely target? If this is the magnitude of this day, the magnitude of this day should probably take you right up to the 200-day moving average. Uh, yes, if this is a 50 to, let's say, 65, that means you've probably got a 15-point price move potential on the upside. Now, that's not an exact, but we don't need to be exact, because if this starts getting up toward 10, 12, 15 points, what do we, should we be looking for? We should be looking for the sell signal. Remember, the signal is much more important than what the projected target is going to be. The projected target is just some place where it might go to, but the signal, uh, the signal would be something that uh, that tells you exactly what's going on in investor sentiment. Uh, let's see, why did I have OPK on here? Kind of a little fry pan bottom, strong price move, little J hook pattern. Is it still time to be buying RPTP? No, because this is not a high probability buy at this point. If this is wave one and this is wave three, we're probably getting pretty close to um, this getting toward its uh, its uh, upside potential. First of all, you're in the overbought condition. Number two, look how far away you are from the T line. So right now, with it up this high, away that far away from the T line, nothing yet to show if there's any selling. But I would definitely put a sell stop at today's open. If you're in the overbought area and you've got a good bullish candle, they should not be bringing it back down below the open of that previous day's candle. Perfect place to put your stop. So, Sammy, no. What you're looking for is we've got tons of price patterns that look just like this. And what were some of them? RMTI. Looks like it's just now breaking out. I'd rather be buying something like that where you've still got a lot of upside potential. This is where most people lose their money. They see something that's moving, it's moving, it's moving. Where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. That's what we want to try to keep from doing. We want to be selling to the people that are buying exuberantly at the top. We want to be buying right here. Was there any excitement in this stock right here? To probably 99% of all investors out there, absolutely nothing. Just a slow, lousy trading. But the fact that we could see it was a fry pan bottom was a much more uh, uh, crucial reason for buying this one at these levels because we know what the results of a fry pan bottom are. Is this, this price move? Okay, and one more uh, IMT, or ITIM. Another slow rounding bottom. This one you can be buying as long as it stays above the T-line. Once again, notice how it came out of this little slow fry pan bottom, had a strong price move. Might be, you had a J-hook pattern here. You might now have a much bigger J-hook pattern uh, setting up. Is it the stop halfway down the breakout candle based upon closing price or intraday? Uh, closing price, remember. The information that we want to see was what is the final decision between the bulls and the bears. So if I see an overbought condition, what were we looking at, RP, RT? I don't want to see this one closing more than halfway down this candle. But intraday, I don't want to see it trading, trading below this level. That would tell me the bears are starting to take control 
uh, uh, it's tied to be out of that position. And oh, who wrote this one? I can see B E N. Oh, I don't know why I've got that one on here. Unless I, all right, we'll go on to the next one. So, all right, now another thing to watch for is the obvious, and that's the adva exact advantage we have with candlesticks is we can see what's going on at important technical levels, which in this case, the 50-day moving average is an important technical level. When it got back here, a bullish Harami hammer resisted right here, came back, did a morning star type signal. Notice that they couldn't close back below the 50, opened below the 50 and closed back up. That's another advantage we have by being able to see uh, what this candle actually looked like, um, that they opened lower and came right back up. That's a lot more information than if we just saw a bar down here below the uh, 50. And then when they came up through here with a morning star type signal, made it very simple the next day. If they were trading positive, it would be telling us two things. One that they're confirming the morning star signal by staying above the T line, and two, they're breaking out through this range, which would obviously tell us that this whole area is supporting at the 50. So if we can see things that are supporting at the 50, like, well, Shazam. That wasn't supporting at the 50, but this is uh, obviously wave one, wave two, Coming back up to the T line, I think that got stuck in there. Uh, PWRD, the reason we recommended this one was nice steady uptrend, pulled back exactly to the 50 day moving average, did a morning star signal, closed above the T line, today it followed through. This tells me if this is wave one, wave three is probably going to be the same magnitude. Uh, PWRD, yes, I, my, that's still a buy because notice what it did today. This is the first day that it broke out through this level. I wouldn't be afraid to be buying this on positive trading and then just use the key line as your stop. OSTK came right back smack dab to the 50. Started seeing indecision tr trading, bullish engulfing signal breaking out through this downtrending channel. That one can be bought. And UNXL, make this a little bit bigger. We've got a big, huge fry pan bottom. Started up, pulled back right to where? Right smack dab to the uh, 50. Did a doji, did a morning star. Now it's taking back up. Where's our next target? Up here at the uh, 200. If it breaks out through that level, which it might not do the first time, but if it hits up here and fails, then what do we have? We've got a lower low, a higher high, a higher low, a higher high. You can pretty well assume this fry pan bottom is now in progress. And uh, let's see, we have UNTD. Right smack dab to the 50 with a bullish engulfing doji sandwich breaking through this downtrending channel. Would suspect at least coming up here and possibly going back up to the top of the trend channel, which would take you even higher. So what we're trying to do and what we have the advantage of doing is seeing exactly what's going on in investor sentiment at important technical levels. When we start seeing bullish signals, there's your left-right combo. A doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal, telling us that the 50-day moving average is acting as uh, support. Then we had a doji sandwich that took us through the uh, T-line. Plus, we've got what could be pretty much construed as a scoop pattern. The more information we can put into our analysis of why there would be a slingshot effect, probably of this magnitude, the higher the probabilities we're going to be in the right trade at the right time, number one. Number two, if there's a pattern setting up, even if the market is sluggish, the pattern is still probably going to give us some, uh, uh, some good results uh, despite which way the market is going. MDV.
n right off the 50-day moving average, bullish engulfing signal, breaking out through this little trend channel on a, a kind of a doji sandwich. Uh, this one's probably going higher, possibly the same magnitude as this. Now, there's nothing, uh, uh, nothing magical about this. It's just taking what the Japanese rice traders have identified for hundreds of years of how investors react that we're, we're just using that same information to tell us what type of strength do we have coming out of resistance levels. There's our doji type sandwich. There's our inverted hammer. We're kind of broke through this level. That tells us there's probably more upside than this one. And F and W. Whoops, that's not right. I don't know. How can I goof up that many times? Yep, that one's disappeared. All right. Now, same scenario with a J-hook pattern. Oh, I hate when that happens. Morning star signal. J-hook pattern. Where are we right now? Right at a resistance level with a doji. If this opens positive, what's that telling us? Doji sandwich potential. If we have a doji sandwich, where's that taking us? Out through this level. What's our next target? Right up here to the 200-day moving average. So again, if we can think or visually see as many things as we can that would indicate that uh, they're going to be doing reoccurring of what investor sentiment has done for hundreds of years, the better off we are. Another doji with stochastics heading up right here at a resistance level. If it opens positive, we can pretty much assume we're going to come back up here and test this level. That would make for a good uh, option trade. Uh, sure. Uh, sounds like the basis for an emotional trade. Oh, okay. Um, sure, is that very simple J-hook pattern. As it pulled back, it was very indecisive. Now they've taken it right back up. Wave one. Wave two, wave three. That's what we're looking for in a J-hook pattern. So if we see something setting up, a wave one, wave two, wave three, if it's this move, this move, that's probably going to get us pretty close to either testing this level and or going up to the 200-day moving average. What is a double doji sandwich? Uh, we'll get to some of those. We know a doji sandwich is when you head up, I'll find one for you, uh, Harry. I'm sure we will have more in here. There's your J-hook pattern. Now, so is the 200 going to be acting as resistance? Possibly, but if we can already calculate, notice how this trend started with your best friend, which is a gap up from a doji through the resistance level, morning star signal. Now, notice the indecisive pullback. Is it going to hold here or stop here at the 200? Possibly, but if this is wave one, wave three should take us up in here, which means they're going to go right through. Uh, DDD has a double doji sandwich. Uh, yeah, he had a big move. Then he had kind of two little dojis. Then they open up positive on the third day. What do the two little dojis tell us? There's a consolidation, but there's not any real decisive selling. Then if they open up positive the next day, what's that basically telling you? That this indecisiveness is over, they know which way they want to go with this. And especially when they gap it up, that tells you there's a lot of force in that uh, price move. Uh, AFFX, there's your gap up, best friend, J-hook pattern, starting back up, wave one. We could pretty well calculate where wave three should go to. And once it gets up into that area, we start being a little more uh, diligent uh, as far as looking for that sell signal. Uh, let's see. I don't know why the heck I've got this one, but there's your bearish J-hook pattern. 
but I must have something wrong here. I don't know why that was in here. All right, so that means we better swiftly move on. All right, there's your wave one. Doji gap up. J-hook pattern. Will we risk resist here at the 200? Possibly, but more than likely, we're going to have a wave one, wave three, which means we will go through the 200. CZR is a uh, yeah, let's see, yeah, it might have been a more. Sometimes the charts don't have the exact same, uh, but you can see that this actually looked like a Doji on uh, TCNet and Metastock. Then you had a Doji right here with a gap up. Told you this J hook pattern was in progress. Uh, Facebook is uh, one that we are in. Oh, what's happened here? I hit too many. That's what I get for having a fat fingers. Now, it's got done kind of a doji day-to-day. -day. Let me make sure that it's... Yeah, so this makes it very simple. If it opens positive, where is it going? Wave one, wave two. Notice how wave three started with a doji gap up. Now they're above the T line. If they open this positive, remember the rule of the doji, they're going to move it in the direction how they open it after a doji. On the other hand, if they open it negative, more than likely they're coming back down to test the T line. And if you're trading it, uh, you pretty well want to be out of it. An apple did kind of an inverted hammer. This makes this very simple. They're going to move this and how they open it tomorrow. If they open this positive, you can pretty well be rest assured they're moving away from the T-line again. You're going to be in a strong uptrend. Uh, let's see. ABX. This is where your doji sandwich, again, comes into play. There's your inverted hammer, graystone doji, gap up through this resistance level, through the 50. Then you had your indecisive pullback. It curves right back up. If they open positive tomorrow, you want to be buying. Where is your next likely target? Possibly all the way up to the 200-day moving average. And all right, now, the difference between a fry pan bottom and a slow curve. The slow curve usually happens in an uptrend. They move it up, they pull it back very quickly, indecisively, and then once they come back out of the indecisiveness, it's a good spring action uh, to the upside. That's uh, one of the reasons why we were recommended VNDA, kind of a slow curve setup. Now they've got the spring action, and notice where they close this today. The castics coming up. If they open this positive and break out through this level, there's your wave one, there's your trade for wave three. That's going to take you up past your, or about the same level it peaked out before. Do you sell at that level? That's what the signals will tell you, whether they're failing here and taking profits at the resistance level or whether they're going through. Positive above closing price. Positive, yeah, the closing price. Um, uh, let's see, rig, we will, again, we'll get to some of these. Rig is nothing there. Uh, can't get up above the key line right now. All right, uh, HGG. Ah. Kind of has that slow curve. This is where you just stay long as long as it doesn't stay uh Come back below the T line. EXK, another J hook pattern. If this is wave one, EXK should break out through that, that level. Did I already do that one? And look, no, yes, I did. Maybe, yes, I'm way up there. Did slow curve and they've broken out. Now, sometimes I look at these and then I say, well, Sotheby's, how far can that go? It doesn't matter what I think. The chart is telling me different, but they're going to start taking this one higher. So 
if there's ever a time where you think, oh, I don't like that type of stock, or I don't even like that stock, just put your hand over the chart name and say, what would I be doing with this? That will take the emotion out of your trading and get you, uh, some people don't like to trade XYZ because they've lost money the last three times they traded XYZ. So they don't want to trade it again. Well, if you put your hand over the uh, symbol or the name, you just have to say, is this the time to be buying? Um, yeah, we're waiting for the double line. Remember, I'm not going to get to any of your individual ones until we get to the double line, and then try to keep it down to below two per person so we can get through them all. Uh, nugget, we're doing BAH. There's that slow curve in an uptrend. That could be the slingshot action to the upside. Um, and DMD. Another slow curve right here at the resistance level. If it gets through the uh, the 50, there could be a good slick action right back up here, basically coming up here to fill the gap. And that was also uh, kind of uh, why we were in Facebook, was because of this slow curve, J-hook type setup. And belt hold, the reason you buy a belt hold type pattern Bam. Well, how about that? There we go. Is that basically tells you when they gap it down and bring it back up into the trend channel, that they wiped out the last of the sellers and uh, start looking for for buying, which means there's no sellers in the way anymore. That can contribute to a very strong uptrend. The reason we like this chart. On the next move up is because they basically took this chart from three bucks to twenty or almost thirty bucks on the first move up. That could contribute to another move that would take you up into forty five dollar area. All right, so that's about all I've got tonight. So do we have any question questions on candlesticks? Uh, let's see. What is a belt hold? Uh, a belt hold is when they gap it way out of the trading range. Is anybody, uh, what did we were looking at? Uh, S dot U S U. This one, notice what they did. They gapped it down below the trading range and then brought it back up into the trading range. Now, when they brought it back into the trading range, it didn't do a signal. Now, this could be considered a little belt hold piercing signal because it came more than halfway up this candle. This one just came up. It didn't come do any signal. It just gapped below the trading range and came back up into it. That, uh, that's kind of your belt hold. The Japanese rice traders explain it as the two sumo wrestlers are fighting. One's trying to back out of the ring. The other one grabs his belt and pulls him back, and they're back to fighting again. We're not waiting. Okay, let's see. PCRX is a belt hold. Notice where you had this trading range. Thank you, Stephen. Gapped it way down right on the 50, and then what did they tell you? The bulls came right back in. That tells you that you're still in an uptrend, that there's uh, a lot of the selling is out of the way. If a gravestone doji with a low stochastics has 95% up probability, do you feel high stochastics and a shooting star has a comparable 95 probability of a rollover? Maxwell on, uh, uh, let's see, Maxwell on January 12th.
right here. You know, your stochastics were just getting up. Uh, you have that probability, but remember, you still have to use the, uh, uh, you, you weren't heavily in the overbought area, number one. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And you still had an uptrend where you just came off a strong signal breaking out. You still had to use the T-line as your final confirmation. Now, you're always going to be able to find the exceptions to the rules. But the probabilities are that a, a positive tra trading after an inverted hammer is a very high probability trade. Whenever I run a Morningstar signal scan, it always comes up empty. That might mean your uh, the formula is off a little bit. I'll have to see. Oops, let's see. Uh, uh, we're going to be doing the three uh, EMA. The three EMA is something that you can use that if the uh, the price, the T line tells us what to do if it moves away from the other moving averages. Then if we get a very strong price move, the three EMA tells us what to do when it moves away from the, uh, the T line. So it uh, gives us a, a, a kind of a quicker viewpoint of when to start taking some profits. Uh, using the uh, using the T line, and we'll go into that in more detail. The 34 EMA again is not used very much, but it's more uh, uh, crucial. Not crucial. What am I thinking? Pertinent uh, when it comes to uh, uh, using it for a uh, commodity trading. A flutter kicker is where you have a, uh, a red. Candle. The next day, they gap it up and do a doji. And knowing what the simple rule of the doji is, I'm trying to think of which one we've used recently for the flutter kicker. Um, I'll try to find one. But a flutter kicker is like a kicker signal, except it has a doji that gapped up above the previous day's open. And uh, so it's like a... Uh, a doji sandwich, except the first candle would be a red candle, the second would be a gap up doji, the third candle is a green candle. When should I place directional option trade for a fry pan bottom breakout? Uh, when you see it breaking out. Remember, a lot of these uh, are very lethargic, uh, dull trades until they start breaking out. That's when the uh, that's when you should start uh, putting your uh, start buying the calls. Um, how do you tell the difference between a stock going down versus profit taking? Usually, if you see them backing off with indecisive trading, that's profit taking. The bulls and the bears aren't really uh, showing any conviction of selling off, and then you see the indecisive trading start slowing back up or trading back up again. Okay, all right, I guess with that, uh, market direction in a week like this, last of the summer. Uh, market direction, still think we're in this uptrending channel, but it'll be important to see how they, uh, the pre-market futures uh, open this market tomorrow. Uh, in Q. For example, in the NASDAQ, we're right here at a, even though we're above the T line, we're right here kind of at a resistance level. The CASIC's heading up. If they open this lower tomorrow and come down and play with the T line, that means the uh, Dow is selling off. That tells us we're probably still in the sideways trend channel versus trying to break out to the upside. Now, I say probably because they're going to move it in the direction of how they open it tomorrow after uh, the NASDAQ doji. Um, and that's just kind of a uh, added benefit that we have with uh, knowing what uh, what should happen after a signal. Uh, 
Uh, Tyler, if they open it positive tomorrow, that means they're still taking it up. Now, there's a lot of times where we're in an uptrend and they open it lower. I wouldn't be a buyer. But after 30, 40 minutes, if they bought selling stops and the buying starts coming back in, they'll uh, usually be a, uh, that's usually the time to start buying at that point. Whoops. Uh, let's see, that's more of a kicker signal, not a flutter kicker signal. There's your kicker signal where they opened it here, closed it here, then they opened it at the previous day's open, which means they gapped it up and then took it this way. That's a, that's a kicker signal. Uh, let's see, flutter kicker signal, somebody. I know we're we were in one that started uh out mm -hmm. oh, oh, come on. Uh depends on what you're trading, Marco. I'm a I'm a swing trader, so my trades usually last two to ten trading days. But candlestick signals work just as well on a one minute chart as they do on a daily chart or a monthly chart. So it all depends on and what your time frame is. So uh, if you're a day trader, use the one minute. I use when I traded the uh, uh, the S&P 500 or the uh, mini e minis. I'd use a one minute, three minute, ten minute chart combination. Depends on how actively you trade. Now, if I'm trading soybeans intraday, I will usually come back to my ten minute chart. And the 10-minute chart usually works relatively accurately. And then when I see that my 10-minute chart is moving in a particular direction, let me see if I can do this. For example, if I see a gap up the next day, what do we expect? A 45 degree. Then if I see my 10-minute chart start selling off, uh, I might then flip to my 5-minute chart. So if my five-minute chart starts telling me, yeah, it's time to start looking to get out, the 10-minute chart uh, confirmed, uh, that's, that's the way I usually trade uh, uh, things intraday. Let's take a gander here at... Uh, No, I don't see a flutter kicker. Whoops, unless no, that's more of a uh, that's what you call a doji sandwich. You got a green candle, a uh, doji, another green candle. If this had been a red candle and they gapped it up here, that becomes a flutter kicker. Let's see, AMBA down, but last hour chart suggests selling has stopped, but yeah, that doesn't really matter. Whoops. S dot A M B A. It's what the daily chart is telling us. So it could, but notice again where you kind of closed out right here on the 200-day moving average. If I was short, I'd be watching to see how they open this tomorrow. If they open it positive, I'd start covering my short position. Yes, the uh, flutter kicker is a kicker signal with a hiccup. When I see a, a buy announcement in the chat room, do you post when you exit these trades? Uh, most of the time. Now nah, I shouldn't say most of the time. Some of the time. Not because I'm being delinquent. Usually when I'm closing something, I'm ready to turn right around and buy something else. Um, but I will post when, uh, uh, yeah, I've, uh, the other day we, uh, when I was shorting this one, whoops. We put out there that if uh, it started trading positive uh, right in here, you probably wanted to close out the position. Now, that doesn't stop you from reshorting it if it fails the uh, 50. But if this has an inverted hammer and goes positive, now you want to start going going long. 
Okay, uh, Jim, let's go ahead and do the double line. All right, and let's go ahead and do the second double line. Just so I can stop the scrolling. Yeah, nope, I didn't stop the scrolling. Okay. All right. DGIT, that's a little belt hold bullish engulfing right on the T line. Uh, pretty good place to be buying if it opens positive tomorrow. Ford was up above the T line. Whoops. Ford. That was, it was up above the T line. If you're trading forward on a short-term basis, it has to open positive and trade positive. If it opens lower, you're still in a downtrend. If you're trading it uh, for longer term, I'd still hang on to it because uh, if you go to your weekly charts, you're still in this uptrending channel. And RDN, that was mentioned in the chat room today. RDN also has to climb up above the T line. I would, uh, if you bought it today, it better open positive because if it opens lower tomorrow, this little squeeze to you after the doji, they're taking it this way, which means you're now wave one, wave two, wave three to the downside. KWK. Like this bigger, that's got that little slow curve trajectory. Just make sure your volume's good. Um, that this one you can be buying on positive trading tomorrow using the uh, T line as your stop. And EMMS, another one with a slow curve. This one you can be buying. Make sure your volume's good also on this one. When you get in these lower price stocks, you probably want to see at least six, eight. 100,000 or better trading every day so you can get in and out of them. YZC, another slow curve. This one can be bought on positive trading tomorrow, but this one almost looks like it's a vo low volume stock also just because of the little gaps and no trading above uh, each of the candles. BCRX, we still have a recommended buy on this. There's your double doji. Um, when they take it up, in Indecisive, indecisive, and then they tell you which way they're going, plus it confirms the stripe pan bottom breakout. BRNG, that one I wouldn't be long, and you can't go short. You probably want to be trading something better than that one. Let's see, natural gas, oh, we get that over here, that's right. Natural gas. Slowly coming back up, but looks like it's still uh, very slow. Notice your stochastics are in the overbought area. You've got this little squeeze going on. You're trading in between the 50 and the uh, uh, the uh, T line. So right now you stay long as long as it doesn't close back below the T line, but you need to be pretty uh, um, diligent as far as watching it get up through the 50-day uh, moving average. Well, this is a fine howdy do. What are we doing here with Apple? I'll have to come back to this one because for some reason they aren't giving us our information. And NPSP, this one we closed out today, I think. Well, Shazam, hold on. We just lost some of the feeds here. There we go. Apple. Apple did a little inverted hammer. It needs to open positive. If it opens lower, um, especially trades back down below the T line, you probably want to be closing out. And what was the other one that didn't come up? Oh, NTSP. Uh, this one, all you can do is stay long as long as it stays above the T line. 
and GMCR stay long as long as this stays up above the T-line. NVAX. Notice the indecisive pullback. You're still in an uptrend. Notice your kind of your uh, cradle right here off the uh, off the 50. And FXEN. Another slow curve. If it comes back up through the 50, your next target is going to be the uh, the 200. But it needs to break this downtrending channel. And ONVO. Morning star signal. This is what I call the stutter step. When they take it up, they pull it back, and then you get another buy signal. That tells you the profit taking is over from this trend. And you're still, I wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one on a positive open tomorrow. And CHTP, this one's got that slow curve bouncing smack dab off the uh, 50. This one you can be buying using the T line as your stop. And the Bank of Ireland. Stay long, but here's your uh, doji in the overbought condition. It's going to move in the direction of how they open it after the doji. And beat, beat, we're still long on this one. Another one, you just stay long until you see a sell signal. Notice what this did. There's your kind of your flutter kicker. A dark candle, a gap up above the previous day's open, and then a bullish candle. That's a pretty good indication they're taking this one higher. FST didn't execute the other day, but notice what it's doing. It's doing the T-line crunch in here, fry pan bottom. This one's very, very simple. You've got a doji occurring right on the 200-day uh, moving average makes it very simple. If it opens positive tomorrow, you buy immediately. As a matter of fact, that might get a little star next to it. And MPEL. MPEL, all you can do here is stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Now, you do have a little left-right combo, but I wouldn't want to see it close back below the T-line or it's time to get out. KERX, another one. Let's make these a little bit steeper here. Kind of got that advanced uh, methods where notice they pulled back indecisively, then they closed above this level, bullish engulfing. That means if they open this positive, breaking through this downtrending channel, you can be a buyer because now you have wave one, wave two, uh, you're into wave three. ACAD, dang these charts. Little doji sandwich, stay long on this one as long as it stays above the T-line. Scotty, Scotty isn't there yet. It needs to have a buy signal and a close above the T-line. Now, just because it closes above the T-line doesn't necessarily did mean it did a buy signal. You want to see that, uh, that combination. Uh, CLDX, I would use, now this is a case where if you're getting up in the overbought area and you have a doji, I wouldn't want to see it trade below today's low. If it comes down through there, that tells you they've gone this direction and the bears are in control. PXWL. S.PXWL. Ah, that's not coming up. That might be a lap. CYTK. Uh, this one failed at the 50. I wouldn't, uh, uh, you know, you're not getting any real enthusiasm here. Just watch your T-line crunch. I would wait for the T-line crunch now to push it back up through the 50-day uh, moving average. And mortgage, another one that has to open positive and trade positive. If it opens lower, not only is it trading back below the T-line, but you can see the trajectory of this uptrend has gotten very stale. You want to get back out of it and find something that has better. Uh, and notice how this bounced. It bounced up without a signal. Even though that's an update, you haven't really had a signal until right here, and that wasn't real strong. So you definitely want to see uh, a positive open to this or you get out of the trade. There, here you have a signal. Bouncing off the 50 with a bullish engulfing signal. 
Now there's your left-right combo, which is a doji bullish engulfing signal. This one you can be buying on positive trading. And BV, S dot, BV, uh, inverted hammer, bullish confirmation, breaking out through this downtrending channel. This one you can buy on positive trading. And C, S, T, E. Uh, wouldn't be buying this until it breaks out through this level. You've got a morning star signal, but you might have a J or a fry pan bottom, which means if it's moving flat, look for this to be the dimple. If this is the beginning of the fry pan bottom, the other half over here, I'd buy it when it breaks out through the upside. And Lulu, Lulu has a left right combo, still staying up above the T line. This one you can still buy on positive trading. Now we did Facebook. Facebook has a nice, uh, whoops, S. Yes. Uh, Facebook has a nice rounding bottom. You continue to hold this one. You could still buy this one on positive trading. If this is wave one, which was approximately uh, 23 points, 23 points from right in here would take you up into the uh, $61 range. And G, whoops. GLD, S dot GLD is still this slow uptrend uh, that uh, gold is moving in right now. Tesla, stay long as long as you don't see it close below the T line. However, notice where it kind of failed today. If you draw a line right up through the top, so that's right where it hit today. Um, so if you see a trend channel and they start showing weakness at the top, take some profits. They could be coming back down to test the bottom of the trend channel. Pay. Another little uh, uh, oh, doji sandwich potential. Where's your target? Draw a line through the top. So you could still have a good pop up to that level. Sony. Uh, Sony trades overseas quite a bit. But you did have a doji gap up. This one's very simple. If they open this positive tomorrow, they're taking it up to the 50. If they open it lower, you're still kind of in a downtrending channel. YRCW. This one you can buy on positive trading. Just use the T-line as your stop. Notice how you had your bullish harami, which told you the selling had stopped. Doji, 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 gap up from there. And P A M T. Ooh, another one that if they open this positive and break the 50, then they need to break this level. So you've, you've got potentially a good 10% move in this one still. And Q is the one that we closed out today. No, it isn't. This one was. Which one did I close out? I can't remember. Um, but this one, you stay long. You still have the little scoop type set up. I would still anticipate a move to the top of the trend channel. Let's see, did we do GDX? GDX, uh, doji sandwich, uh, potential to the upside. A positive open would pretty much tell you they're taking it up to the, uh, the 200. DYT is just not coming up. Uh, CRM, inverted hammer type signal. This has to open positive. If it opens lower, pretty good evidence that they're taking, they're not in the oversold area yet. So there's good evidence that we taking it down to the 200 and the, uh, the 50. ERII. Doji sandwich, there's your rounding bottom. Doji sandwich, if this opens positive tomorrow, you want to be buying immediately, and then you just put your stop at today's low. It shouldn't come back down through that level. Uh, we did KTOS. That had a good uh, bottoming action. Broke out through this level. You're in wave three. You just stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Bank of America, you can stay long as long as it opens positive tomorrow. 
uh, beat, uh, stay long. We did MTG, uh, dang. Dang hasn't gotten going yet. It can't get back up above the T line. So you want to, you need to see definitely a strong signal. Right now it hasn't had a signal. That wasn't quite a piercing signal. So anytime I see an up move without a signal, that gives me a little bit more evidence that maybe this isn't the, uh, move just yet. Wait for a stutter step where you see the next buy signal. Tesla hit the top of the trend channel. Let's see. AGQ. A doji sandwich setup. Uh, still in an uptrend as long as it doesn't close below the T line. Tiffany's. Whoops. S dot T I F. More magnitude. Tiffany's uh, got the potential, and it's not anything that I'd get real excited about. Number one, because of the lack of magnitude and price movement, over the last month it's moved three points on an $80 stock that's, eh, what, 4%? I'd be buying something else. Uh, C L I R. Uh, stutter step. This one, uh, you had the Doji Harami bullish confirmation. Make sure you're, this one also looks like there might be low volume, but definitely want to be buying this one, especially if they can move it back up to the 50 tomorrow. An OVTI, nice breakout. Broke out through this downtrending channel. Did a Doji bullish confirmation. Look for a 45 degree come off of here. Ow. That one's slowly coming back up, but you need to see a little bit more strength in it yet. Uh, I'd rather buy this one on a strong price move. The Soro, browning bottom. This one you can buy, just being a little bit diligent to see what it does uh, at the 50. Let's see, did we, I think we did EMSS. Uh, slow fry pan bottom. This one you can buy on positive trading tomorrow. And ABX was one that we illustrated with the J-hook pattern or the slow curve. This one you can be buying on positive trading tomorrow. Let's see, Groupon. Groupon, notice uh, the inverted hammer, bullish confirmation, uh, uptrend. And you always want to take a look to see what way is this price moving. It's in a trend channel. I'd be looking for it to move to the top of the trend channel. Uh, glue. Glue did a nice morning, strong morning star signal. A little backing and filling today, but I'd buy this one if it came back up through... Uh, uh, or on a positive open tomorrow. First resistance is here at the 50, then the 200, but there's a gap up here. That's, uh, they're bottoming, bottoming out at the same level it bottomed out before, so look for it to move to the top of the trend channel. And CLGX. Uh, CLGX. Stay long. The anticipation is that you're still going higher, but at this point, I wouldn't want to see it trade back below today's low. If it does that, that means they're trading uh, off this doji back to the T line. Okay, and there's the second double line. I right, would we'll do a few more. Let's see, Wendy's. Uh, stay long on this one, but it needs to open positive. We did pay Royal Caribbean. Uh, this one I would rather pay 40 bucks for knowing that it broke out to the upside. Right now we don't know whether how long this sideways motion is going to persist. I'd be trading some something else. S dot V R X. Uh, another one that you don't want to buy until you see it back up above the T line. You're in an upward trend channel, but 
what it's telling us right now is that we might not be back to the bottom of the trend channel just yet. Uh, if you're short, you stay short. If you're looking to buy, you definitely need to see a close above the T-line. Um, A-R-I-A. This one, you want to buy if it comes up through the 50 tomorrow. Because if it comes back down, then you have to wait for the T-line to push it back up through. Newmont Mining. Whoops. Had a nice looking chart today. Well, shuts butts. RMTI. This is just great. CCRX. All right, we're going to give this a few more seconds. There we go. RMTI can still be bought if it breaks out tomorrow. BCRX, same scenario. This one should be in wave three. Um, PGH still paying a good dividend, like 10% at this level. Oh, for crying out loud. PGH is trying to do a scoop pattern off the 50-day moving average. This one can be bought on positive trading tomorrow. And that might be... The end of the evening here, if these things don't start coming up very quickly. Well, how about that? I love scaring these charts. J-hook pattern, if it opens positive after the uh, doji today. Um, look for a J-hook pattern to take you up to the 200. The T-line crunch is where the T-line pushes you up through a resistance level. They can't get it back below the T-line. It keeps crunching it up to that resistance level until they break out to the upside. Uh, Facebook. Whoops. Hit a Fibonacci number. It could be, but I think if this is wave one, wave two, wave three tells us we should be going much higher. Uh, beat. No. Nothing here that tells us we're still not in this 45 degree. And notice what trajectory the 45 kicker, the kicker signal brought us back into. This is the same trench channel. There did it from here, 45 degree. Brought it back up, 45 degree. Just stay long until you see a sell signal. Did DDD do a reversal of the trend channel? No, it stayed above the trend channel. We actually did a gap up through that resistance level. So I would suspect that DDD should be moving higher from here now that it's broken out through that. Um, Okay, if your connection is bad, PAMT, uh, this one definitely needs to see a positive open tomorrow to stay in it. Otherwise, you might have the T-line crunch. And notice how the, they can't, can't get below the T-line. If they bring it down and it doesn't close below the T-line, that means they're crunching up into the resistance and they'll break through. And NQ, whoops, S dot NQ. This was the one that we closed out today. It needed to open positive after the doji right here on the T-line. When they gapped it down, it was time to be out. You can always buy back in, but it needs to get back up above the T-line. That one's been closed. 
do you measure the 45 degree from the low of the price or the close? It doesn't matter. Just something that, uh, what, what, what were we looking at? Uh, I forget. Just as long as you can see, there's kind of a 45 degree angle coming up off, off of there. Let's see. R-E-N. Saw. There we go, REN. Uh, it's probably moving back up here, but it doesn't have a strong reversal signal. It doesn't have a real good chart trend. It's probably moving higher, but I'd, I'd be trading something else. And APRI. Same scenario here. There's nothing here that would make me want to buy this chart. And NAK. That was a uh, big hammer signal. If this opens positive, you can be buying. But you're still kind of in this wedge. I would anticipate this is your resistance level. Uh, if you try to, yeah. You, yeah, you don't want to be real precise on the 45 degree. Do you ever sell on a really big move up in one day, like a BCRX, up after a 20% move midday? Not on a breakout situation, because that's what we're looking for is the big move. Now, on a move like this, where you get a big, huge move, now I'll start taking some profits with the anticipation there'll be a pullback. But I didn't, wouldn't take them here. I wouldn't take them here because that was part of the breakout. So I would anticipate there's more upside on this one. Now, there are situations where, yes, when you get a big price move, you do take profits. But that's usually when you see the end of the move. Here's, uh, here's the beginning of our move, a doji gap up. And then here's the end of our move. With a gap up in the overbought condition, you have a huge move. This is where you want to use the T-line, but not necessarily on a daily chart. This is where you flip back to your 10-minute chart. Let me see if I can find this. Which apparently I'm not doing. There we go. On your 10-minute chart, you see the big gap up. They take it up. Notice how far away you are now from the 10-minute T-line. Notice where your uh, 3T is. But here's a case where if I'm that far away from the T-line on the 10-minute chart and I start seeing a sell signal, I'm going to start taking profits because where's my next likely target? Back to the T-line. Then I can always buy back uh, uh, at that level. Um, oh, and... Let's see, let me go back to end. And same scenario, doji, doji, right here at the uh, resistance level. If this opens positive tomorrow, what's it basically telling us? That they're moving in a positive direction after how, on how they open it after a doji, and it's breaking out through here after a rounding bottom that had a inverted hammers confirmed would tell us more than likely we're going to the top of the trend channel, which would move us up into this area. The end isn't here, obviously. Um, I beat uh, right. GTI. Yes. GTI. Uh, looks like it's got the potential of a, a breakout, um, but it's still. I want to see it get through this kind of this level. That tells us where the last trading was. Uh, SU. That's sugar, or S dot SU, is uh, Sunoco. You're in an uptrend. Once again, you've got to be careful what your price uh, percentage is on this one. It doesn't have very big percent price moves. But 
at this point, with it doing a left-right combo right on the T-line, I would stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Does a doji sandwich give an indication of what follows it, or is it just the three candles that make up the pattern? Uh, the three candles make up the pattern, but the result is usually more upside after the uh, after a doji sandwich. This is kind of a double doji sandwich, two dojis and a bullish confirmation. You've got an inverted hammer. Let's make this big enough where we can see it. Close above the T line. This one I wouldn't be afraid to be buying on a wave one, wave two. This has all the buy signals in here that you'd like. Um, yes, NQ uh, should have been closed out today. Okay, I guess that's about all we got for tonight. We definitely want to see this market uh, at least trade flat or open positive a little bit tomorrow. So when you get up, the uh, pre-market futures will give you a good idea which way they're taking. If they open this lower, it means we might have a bearish J-hook pattern in the making on the uh, Dow. Non-stock requests. Please send your thoughts and prayers to those affected by the fighting. Yes. Uh, all right, Ken, we will do that. That's, uh, I understand there's been a few people uh, uh, injured out there. And... FIO. FIO has a rounding bottom. This one you only want to buy if it comes up through the T line and then uses the T line as support. All right, with that, everybody have a good evening. We'll see you in the chat rooms tomorrow. See you then.